I, Mayor Alyssa Duran, call this meeting to order. May we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Alyssa Duran. Here. Trustee Harrison Smith. Here. Trustee Emily Clark. Trustee Delaney File. Here. Trustee Caitlin Walsh. Here. Trustee Declan Glancy. Here. Trustee Ty Hertzberg. Here. Village Clerk Faith Homage. Here. Village Administrator Alexandria Smith. Here. Assistant Village Administrator Alexis Bugler. Here. Police Chief Alyssa Bell. Here. Fire Chief Russell Swinsky. Here. Finance Director Colin O'Connor. Utilities Director, Mia Drzwicki. Public Works Superintendent, Aiden Maziata. Communica Community and Economic Development Director, Ethan Krohn. Building Director, Chase Sanderson. Event Coordinator, Tina Tiana Marksali. Village Attorney, Jada Abdulrahman. Here. All are present, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Clerk Faith Hummage. I, Mayor Alyssa Duran, proclaim March 21st, 2022, Student Government Day. May I have a motion and a second? I make a motion to approve the proclamation. Do you second that? Clerk Cummage, will you please call to a vote? Trustee Harrison Smith? Here. Trustee Emily Clark? Here. Trustee Delaney File? Trustee Caitlin Walsh. Yes. Tru Trustee Declan Glancy. Yes. Trustee Ty Hertzberg. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Clerk Faith Hummage. I will now take time for reports from the village staff. Will Village Administrator Alexandria Smith please begin? It has come to my attention that the people of Frankfurt have many questions that they would like me to answer. The one of the most, one of the two most frequently asked questions are, what are some of the challenges the village are faced during COVID the COVID-19 pandemic? This is a good question. The pandemic was extremely difficult for our community due to us being a local government, but it was also due to these circumstances that we were able to be flexible and creative with the ways we address COVID-19 in the future. The village board and staff produced new ways to meet and still function like we did before. We went virtual, which allowed us to see each other's faces and allowed us to have a little normalcy in those dark times. We also started programs that stopped many local businesses from going out of business. And I, as administrator, helped guide staff assignments to make sure that our employees would be protected from the virus as they were. The second question was, how does the village pay for large projects like streets and water mains? I saw this question a lot recently, especially with the winter salt ruining the roads in the early spring. I found it only fitting that I answered it here. The village of Frankfurt is lucky to have saved funds and have a careful plan for big projects like repairing roads. This means that Frankfurt does not have to borrow or pay for things like water mains, buildings, and streets, which is a relief to for many taxpayers. The village also takes grants offered by the state of Illinois and the federal government for the these same issues. We have been successful with these grants because of the res reserve funds that we have saved up and that are needed to get grants. I hope these answers satisfy those who ask the questions. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Village Administrator Alex Smith. I will now turn over to Assistant Village Administrator Alexis Bugler. The first question is, are there any projects that you are currently working on? I'm currently working on an enterprise resource system. This system is used for finances, budgeting, general ledger, payroll, permitting, fixed assets, and many more things that will help make it easier for everyone. This current system was implemented over 20 years ago, but the system that we are working on now 
will offer higher abilities for departments to access the data, as well as letting the public be able to access it. The system will be cloud-based and allows for access to anywhere there is an internet connection. The implementation of the system will take between 10 and 12 months and will convert existing and past data into the new system. Staff will be, need to be trained on the system in the new process. The second question that I have been asked is, what role does social media play in the village? Social media allows the village to get out public information to residents and community regarding events, public safety issues, and assisting in creating government transparency using our own message. When reporters or news outlets cover villages, they pick and choose what and how they report information. The village of Frankfurt uses social media like Facebook, LinkedIn, and the village website. Some things like the website are more static and are a location for researching or looking up items, such as our board meeting packets. These were recently put online to allow for the public and residents to see the same packets and information as the village board sees before the vote on the items. Things like Facebook are more dyna dynamic and focus on time-sensitive information sharing, such as public concerns or events. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Assistant Village Administrator Alexis Bugler. I will now turn over to Utilities Director Mia Druzwicki. Today, I have two points to bring to your attention. The first item is regarding the status of the village's lead service line replacement. The village has discovered 28 lead service lines that must be replaced. As a way to fund this project, the village has received a $2 million grant from the Illinois EPA to replace all lead water service lines in the community. As a result, the program will not cost homeowners or the village of Frankfurt anything. Additionally, the grant from the EPA is 100% forgivable. The village's contractor recently began replacing the lead lines with the more modern copper material. This new material will be beneficial to the village and will contribute to the health and safety of the citizens of Frankfurt. This program is ahead of schedule and is expected to be completed by the end of April 2022. The second question I will address is, what areas are included in this year's water main replacement program and what is the status of this project? This year, the Utilities Department plans to spend approximately $1.4 million on their water main replacement project. Each year, the Utilities Department works to identify the areas in the most disrepair. These areas experience the most disruption to the service of our customers, making them a priority. The three areas that require the most frequent repairs this year are Nebraska Street between Locust and Maple, Leslie Lane in the Tanglewood subdivision, and the Butternut Creek Woods subdivision. The areas included in the Butternut Creek Wood subdivision are Butternut Circle, Hornbeam Court, and Catalpa Court. Work is currently underway and is expected to be complete by June. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Utilities Director Mia Drzewicki. I will now go over to Finance Director Colin O'Connor. Good afternoon. There are three questions that have brought to my attention from the citizens these past few days. Revenue, property tax, and the village's long-term financial plan. The first topic is where the village generates its revenue. The majority of our government funds comes from taxes. These include sales tax, income tax, and property tax. At the current moment, the sales tax is at 8%, which is actually one of the lowest in this area. Every time you buy any merchandise in the village of Frankfurt, that 8% sales tax comes right back to the village government to use to further improve our citizens' lives. We also get a small amount of village revenue from the user charges on water and sewage, which is $4.70 cents per thousand gallons for, for water and nine dollars and fifty three cents per thousand gallons of water from of, from the sewage the citizens of the village have a question regarding property tax specifically wondering if the property tax increases every year over the past several years the property tax has actually decreased every year the village receives about five percent of a total property tax paid this property tax could be slightly different depending on where in the village you live because of different libraries, schools, and parks. But the answer is that property taxes have decreased. The last concerns of the citizens I would like to discuss is the long-term financial plan of the village. The village does actually have a long-term financial plan. This plan continues through fiscal year 2032. 
This plan includes the projection of operating costs as well as capital costs. This also accounts for possible trends that might include changes in the economy, incoming revenues, and required expeditures without damaging or risking the village's long-term financial stability. The village is prepared for the future of its citizens. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Finance Director Colin O'Connor. I will now go to Public Works Superintendent Aidan Maziata for his report. I have two items that have been recently brought to my attention to discuss. The first being, how does our village determine which roads will or need to be repaired? Every spring, we visually inspect all roadways as well as investigate resident complaints to determine the necessity for repairs throughout the village. Based upon our findings, we prepare a report, we prepare a report that is then forwarded to an engineering firm who evaluates and prioritizes areas of concern and needed re restorations. Each year, we budget our budget includes money for various roadway, roadway improvements, including crack sealing, patching, resurfacing, and the worst cases, total reconstruction. Now to our second highest concern, the amount of chloride entering our waterways. Public Works staff has done significant amounts of research and determined that the road salt is the greatest contributing factor. Therefore, we have implemented procedures to reduce the amount of road salt while keeping streets safe during the winter. We have calibrated trucks, pre-wetted salt, trained employees on reduced salt, salt usage, and purchased equipment to pre-treat roads with brine. All these measures have significantly reduced the amount of chloride in our waterways. Most recent testing has determined the highest amount of chloride detected has been 1.9 ppm, or milliliters per liter, which is well under the EPA's safe standard of 4 ppm. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Public Works Superintendent Aiden Maziata. Will, director com will the Director of Community and Economic Development, Ethan Crone, please give his report? I'm going to designate my report today to ask commonly asked questions among the citizens of Frankfurt. One of such questions is what will downtown Frankfurt look like in the future? The city of Frankfurt is looking into hire a professional to design a 10 to 20 year plan for downtown Frankfurt. The plan is expected to address the land use, community facilities, and infrastructure. Another commonly asked question is why should we try to save some old buildings from being torn down or changed so they look modern? The village of Frankfurt has a long history of preserving old buildings. It is an important window the, to the past and a strong source of community pride among Frankfurt's residents. Frankfurt prides itself on combining old buildings and modern buildings. My final question, the final question is what is the village doing to help create more fun recreational opportunities for young people? The village has a plan which designates funds and provides lands to build more parks, playgrounds, and biking paths for the youth of Frankfurt. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Director of Community and Economic Development, Ethan Crone. Will Director of Building Chase Sanderson please give his report? Thank you. For my report today, I will be answering two frequently asked questions by the residents of Frankfurt. Number one is, how many permits have we approved in the past year compared to other years? This, so in 2020, we issued 13 single family homes in, and in 2021 uh, compared to 14 this year. In 2020, we issued 11 remodeling permits and compared to seven in 2021 and 12 this year. We also issued 58 accessory permits in 2020 compared to 107 in 2021 and 100 this year. The second point I'd like to address is what is the average approval time for building permits? So permit review times depend on the project. For simpler tasks such as remodeling or accessories, it only takes a few days, while larger commercial buildings can take up to a few weeks to get approved. Commercial permits are also double checked by a third party, which can add to the wait time. 
Our department is currently working to shorten the wait time for smaller remodeling projects through the use of over-the-counter permits. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Director of Building Chase Anderson. Will Event Coordinator Tiana Marksali please give her report? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have two points to present this evening. I per my first point, is it too late to apply to become a vendor at this year's country market? If not, how does one apply? The village is still accepting applications for this year's country market. First time applications should submit application only to slinchy at frankfurtil.org for consideration and approval. Applications can be found on the village's website, www.frankfurtil.org. The vendor's selection takes into consideration many factors, including the right product mix to ensure div diverse and successful market. My second point is, how would a Frankfurt nonprofit organization apply to host a run slash walk event in Frankfurt? Event organizers should complete and return the one slash run slash walk event permit request application to slinchy at frankfurtil.org. The application can be found on the Frankfurt Village website as well, www.frankfurtil.org. The village has preferred 5K rate routes. All events will be reviewed by village staff for conflicts with other events and for the level of inconvenience the event may create for property owners, businesses, motorists, or residents. Routes that require street closures or other uses of streets will also be reviewed by the Frankfurt Police Department for safety. Event organizers will pay for any law enforcement personnel the police department determines are necessary. In addition, event organizers will be charged a flat fee of $500 to cover restroom, cleaning, garbage, and etc. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, event coordinator Tiana Marksali. Will Police Chief Alyssa Bell please give her report for the day? As the police chief, I have three items to discuss tonight. My first point is what is community policing and how does the Frankfurt Police Department utilize this strategy? Community policing is a strategy of policing that encourages interactive partnerships between law enforcement agencies and the people they serve. The Frankfurt Police Department utilizes community policing strategies through community involvement, events and programs that build community partnerships and relationships and through information sharing. One example of the community policing is our Coffee with a Cop program. We host a Coffee with a Cop quarterly and invite all community members to attend and are available to answer questions and listen to concerns. The police department shares information through a quarterly newsletter, various social media sites, and our Nixle information system. We believe that the residents, businesses, and other community members work co collaboratively with the police department is the best way for us to keep Frankfurt safe. My second point is how many police officers does, the, does Frankfurt have? The Frankfurt Police Department currently has 32 police officers. This includes a new officer who is currently in the police academy. And my final point is uh, what are the most frequent calls for service for service the Frankfurt Police Department responds to. The Frankfurt Police Department responds to a variety of calls. Our most common call for service are cases of identity, identity theft, domestic disputes, and traffic related incidents. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Police Chief Alyssa Bell. Will Fire Chief Russell Skabinski please give his report? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have five questions that the citizens of the Frankfurt Fire District have asked this month. The first is involving how the fire district is different from the village itself. The Frankfurt Fire District was created in 1960 via a referendum. This allowed the fire department to receive more funding and let the district be removed from the village of Frankfurt. While the village and the fire department are still separated to this day, there is still a lot of cooperation between. Another one of the submitted questions was what is the most common cause of fires in Frankfurt? The most common cause of fires is the contents of gas-powered dryers starting on fire from lack of maintenance, fireplace and chimney failure from lack of maintenance, and kitchen mistake fires. The third question is, is what is the worst fire in Frankfurt history? In 1989, the H.J. McDonald grain elevator burned to the ground while a volunteer fire department did not have enough water, so they had to stand there and watch. The fire kept burning from the evening until the next morning until the Joliet Fire Department sent a steam-powered fire engine to help stop the fire. The fourth question is, what was concerning on how 911 dispatching works? The 911 calls are all answered on the Larraway Communication Center in Joliet. 
The dispatcher talks with the caller and makes the choice to send EMS, fire, police, or all of them to the situation. Based on the caller's location and the locations of stations and patrolling officers, certain officers and fire personnel will be sent. Lastly, the citizens of the fire district ask, what are the qualifications you need for becoming a firefighter? You will need a State of Illinois Basic Firefighter Certification and a Head of State Illinois Department of Public Health Licensed EMT and Paramedic License. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Fire Chief Russell Skabinski. I will now go on to the Mayor's Report. I would like to touch on several, several points, the first being the qualifications to be Mayor. The mayor must be a legal voting age, which is currently 18 years old. If voting status is revoked, they may not be mayor. They must also reside in the village of Frankfurt for one year. Mayors are elected every four years. To add on, the process to get on the ballot is by asking people to sign a nomination petition to get on the ballot, which the number of people or percentage one would need is based on the last election. Elections are held in April, as I said, every four years. I will now move on to my second point regarding the structure of Frankfurt's governing. Firstly, the process of incorporating parts of Frankfurt was because certain areas wanted more resources to improve the structure of their town and better roads to be built. To continue, the village of Frankfurt is a village and not a city due to the fact it has a population under 25,000, so it's under no home rule, essentially meaning the city gives the village laws and Frankfurt doesn't have the authority to change it. To continue on a question frequently asked on whether Frankfurt Square was ever a part of Frankfurt, the answer is no, it's just a separate neighborhood and truthfully, neither Frankfurt nor Frankfurt Square have a desire to incorporate with each other. To divert, I will go on to my final point, which involves the process as well as other items regarding liquor license. There is currently 36 liquor license in the village of Frankfurt. The process for a restaurant to get a liquor license involves them submitting their interest in writing to the village of Frankfurt, describing their establishment and intention. There is different classifications of liquor license and is voted on whether the establishment should get the license or not. There is very strict rules regarding the licenses. Disobey disobeying the rules can result in a suspension and if continuously repeated, the license may be revoked. That is all. I will now go on to our trustees to see if they have any questions. Trustee Harrison Smith, do you have any concerns? Who is in charge of placing speed bumps throughout the village? And does the village even have speed bumps to begin with? I believe this question can be answered by Police Chief Alyssa Bell. Um, yes. Requests for speed reduction measures would be referred to the Village Traffic Advisory Committee for evaluation. This committee provides recommendations to the Depart Department Operations Committee about traffic-related issues to include speed. Currently, there are no speed bumps in Frankfurt. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Police Chief Alyssa Bell. Does Trustee Emily Clark have any questions? My question for today is, what is the Village doing to help improve our planet? I believe this can be answered by Community and Economic Development Director Ethan Crown. To preserve the environment of our planet, the Village of Frankfurt requires native landscaping. Native landscaping is required in all residential buildings because it uses less water and reduces air pollution. It is found to be the most effective way for this village of Frankfurt to re reduce air pollution. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Community and Economic Development Director Ethan Crone. Does Trustee Delaney File have any questions? I do. My question is, are there any programs available for young people interested in law enforcement? I believe this question can be answered by Police Chief Alyssa Bell. The Frankfurt Police Department has an excellent cadet program for young people interested in becoming a police officer. This program meets weekly and is a great opportunity to see if law enforcement is a career for you. 
The cadets learn police procedures and help the community by volunteering for various events. Information for this program is available on the Village website. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Police Chief Alyssa Bell. Does Trustee Caitlin Walsh have any inquiries? My question is, how many complaints does the Village receive annually regarding owners who don't sufficiently mow their lawn? I believe this question can be answered by Building Department Director Chase Sanderson. So our department gets around 100 annual phone calls. Homeowners not maintaining their property um, can get, like, oh, sorry, I guess. So the village can step in with a contract and make changes to the property if a homeowner is not maintaining it properly. They can also get fined 75 to to $100 if no action is taken after that. Our department must also take into uh, consideration the social aspect of the situation, including the death of a loved one or an inability following that event. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Building Department Director Chase Sanderson. Does Trustee Declan Glancy have any questions? My question is how much will the village spend on road replacement this year? I believe this question can be answered by Public Works Superintendent Aiden Maziata. Excellent question. Due to the extensive amount of repairs and replacement that our village has completed in the past few years, we do not, an, yet, we do not anticipate the need for any excessive repairs, but do expect some minimal patching and crack sealing, crack sealing needing during this fiscal year. We have budgeted $280,000 for these needs. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Public Works Superintendent Aiden Maziata. Does Trustee Tag Hertzberg have any? Uh, I was wondering if the budgeting process and our village could briefly be described to the meeting attendees. Thank you. I believe this can be answered by Finance Director Colin O'Connor. Great question, Trustee Hertzberg. The village new budget starts every new fiscal year, and the next fiscal year begins May 1st, 2022, and goes until April 30th, 2023. The process for this budgeting actually begins in late December. Board initiatives are discussed as they are the pri priority inclusion in this budget. In addition, the input from all departments within the village will be put into consideration when making the budget. The final budget will then be brought before the board for their review and it must be approved by April 30th from three and a half members of the board. When it is improved, it will take into effect once the new fiscal year has started. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Finance Director Colin O'Connor. I will now divert to Clerk Faith Hummage. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As Village Clerk, I would like to bring up some information regarding the upcoming general primary election on June 28, 2022, and the general election on November 8, 2022. For how to register to vote, you can register at the Village of Frankfurt Admission Building, 40, 432 West Nebraska Street, on Monday through Friday between the hours of 8:30 a.m. and 4 p.m. You can also find the correct polling site a resident is supposed to use on the Frankfurt, Illinois website. You, just ha you will have to answer your address and the correct information will pop up. I would also like to talk about how residents can find information regarding early voting. There will be early voting this year. To find information about early voting, you can go to the Will County Clerk website to see a list of locations, dates, and hours. I also think it would be beneficial if I clarify some information about our dress code. Our dress code is business attire, but does change somewhat for some of the hotter months. The, the decisions around surrounding the dress code is decided by our mayor. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Clerk Faith Hummage. I will now go on to Attorney Jada Abdul Rahman's report. Good evening, everyone. Three items on the agenda have been brought to my attention this month. The first item is in regards to the commonly asked question, what proceedings use the attorney and the most, and what are those used? In Frankfurt, the village attorney mostly deals with traffic crimes and violations or misdemeanor offenses. The village attorney attends court when needed to prosecute these traffic violations. While I do not have an office at the village hall, I still represent all departments equally with any legal issues that may arise. The second item asks, does the village attorney need to study a particular
village by this law. There aren't any specific criteria required to become a village attorney. However, you do need to have an undergraduate degree from a nationally authorized institute, followed by three years of law school. After passing the required examinations and obtaining a license, you are allowed to practice law in your respective state and eventually be appointed village attorney. Being a village attorney means you have to be experienced in all levels of law. To gain that experience, a plethora of research and networking is involved. You build connections with attorneys in your respective fields and practice litigating in court often. The last topic regards to questions. Under what circumstances does the mayor vote? The village attorney assists in voting matters during the village meetings and answers the members' questions regarding legal ramifications. There are three circumstances under which the mayor would vote on a motion. One being a tie in trustee votes, another being when half of the trustees have voted but there is no disposition, and lastly, when a certain vote is needed. That concludes my report, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, village attorney Data Abdel Rahman. I will now address other business. Is there any more questions from the staff or the audience? Trustee Ty Kurtzberg. Um, why is the mayor paid so little in comparison to the other village employees? The village is paid so little compared to the other village employees because it is a part-time job and it's a service job. Thank you, Trustee Ty Hertzberg. Is there any more questions? Trustee Declan Glancy. Thank you. My question is, can we loan village resources such as staff or equipment to other villages in the event of an emergency? I believe this question could be answered by Village Administrator Alex Smith. Thank you, Trustee Glancy, for the question. We do not usually loan out money, but we are able to loan out personnel and equipment to other villages if it is needed for emergency purposes, like a fire or a crime. That under those circumstances, we can give out, uh, we can loan out police officers and firemen or women. That is all, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Village Administrator Alex Smith. Now, if there's no other questions, I will remind everyone that all meetings of the Village Board and Village Committees are open to the public. The Village Board is broadcast live and repeated on cable TV6 and at www.frankfurtil.org. This Student Government Day meeting will be available for viewing also. I would like to ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I move to adjourn this meeting. I second that. Will Clerk Hummage please take a vote? Trustee Harrison Smith? Yes. Trustee Emily Clark? Yes. Trustee Delaney File? Yes. Trustee Caitlin Walsh? Yes. Trustee Declan Glancy? Yes. Trustee Tag Hertzberg? Thank you. I now declare this meeting adjourned.